calories, tiny creatures that live in your closet and sew your clothes a little bit tighter every night, okay? I've got two sections to my wardrobe, one for the 110 kilo David and one for the 120 kilo David, okay? I don't really want to go back to the 120 too soon, but um, not because I didn't like it there. My wife gets incredibly annoyed with me for continuing putting on weight and blaming her for shrinking my clothes. Um, exact opposite of weight loss. If you want to gain weight, you need to be increasing your calories above your maintenance levels to gain weight. You need to be in a surplus. You need to be eating more than you're burning. How much surplus? Again, this comes down to the individual. Uh, I've got a, a guy at the moment in, uh, in Dubai who he's, fuck, his maintenance calories is, I think about, it was about two and a half thousand calories and he's eating now three and a half thousand calories and he's only gaining about 250 grams a week. So he's on a, a thousand calorie surplus. Now, me, I need about a 250 calorie surplus and I'm gaming half a kilo a week, okay? So this is where uh, you kind of got to know your body and I generally recommend a more conservative approach to weight loss. If you've always had an issue with gaining weight, then sure, go a bit more uh, balls to the wall with it to start with. Um, but typically 250 to 500 calories above your maintenance is a good place to be at. Weekly weight gain, now again, if you're a, a natural uh, athlete and not drug enhanced, then you're looking for, as a male, no more than probably a kilo a month, so 250 grams a week. And as a female, probably only half a kilo a month, which when you actually look at it over the course of 12 weeks, is not a lot of weight gain. And to track such a small you know, variable uh, is quite tedious and it's quite, you know, um, it's a frustrating. I find weight gain for clients probably more frustrating than weight loss. Um, because you've got to, if you gain too much too quickly, you're gaining fat and you've got to rein it in. Um, so it's a very slow process with weight gain. Mass phase duration, typically, again, between eight to 12 weeks, depending on the person and the body type. If somebody is naturally very lean, uh, mesomorphs are naturally very muscular as well, then they can probably run it for 16 weeks. But in general, most people, eight to 12 weeks for a good mass phase, reassess at the end of that as to where you wanna go next. Again, when to adjust. As soon as weight gain stalls for more than two weeks, increase the calories again. Okay, diet breaks. So um, when I used to work at Evo, one of the guys who worked with us, uh, a guy called Jared Rus, um, if you see pictures of him when he was 16, um, he's like the skinny runt of the litter, you know, absolutely nothing okay, of him. Then you've got his big brothers, who are these big fucking dudes, big like this, and they're obviously pounding on him and beating him up all the time. So since the age of 16 till now, about kind of 24, 25, he's been on a mission to gain weight. Okay? So he's constantly eating in a surplus to, to build himself up to around the 100 kilo mark. Anytime he stops eating at that maintenance amount or that surplus amount, within a week he can drop three kilos. Just like that. Because his genetics and whatnot, the weight just falls off him quickly. And what people do who try to gain weight, they, they do this bulking phase, and then at the end of that bulking phase, they go back into their bad habits, the same as weight loss people, they do the diet and then they go back into their old eating habits and they rebound. The guys who try to gain weight, they rebound back the other way. You need to continue to eat at a higher level of maintenance calories than you were at when you started to allow your body to now say, okay, this is my set point. I'm happy in this position and I can stay here now. So kind of four to six weeks diet break, a new maintenance amount, which is a higher level of calories. That will be their new set point. And uh, they, will, they should be able to maintain that new body weight there. So for me now, dieting down, I need to probably hold my body weight here, you know, for probably six to eight weeks because of my history of obesity and all the stupid shit I did to my body, just for my body to say, okay, I'm happy here before it, so it doesn't push me back up again. 
training. Again, what you guys are doing here is perfect, but weight training essentially is great for it. That's what you need. Um, if you are trying to gain weight, I'd limit the amount of conditioning you're doing. So if you are trying to gain weight here and you're doing wads, whatever, maybe only give six out of 10 <laughs> energy for it. Sorry guys, <laughs> but uh, don't, don't push it balls to the wall. Um, put more of your energy into the, the weight training side of things. Um, but yeah, what you're doing here is perfect for that. Which first? Again, we have this thing where people think they can multitask. No, you can't. You can do two things at once, but you're half assing it every time, okay? So you've got to focus on where your starting point is at. <laughs> most, guys want to, most guys want to bulk and build muscle. Most guys aren't in a starting position to be doing that. Most guys need to lose weight first to get leaner, okay? Women, most, probably 95% of my female clientele want to lose weight to start with. So it all depends on your starting point. You've got to structure your phases. And this is where a plan comes in. You know, Ty and Lush have got plans for your training. You know, things are periodized across the season, depending on when your competitions are, off seasons, and these kind of things. Nutrition is no different to that. You know, you've got to set out your plan for what you're actually going to do. And we'll show you that. At the end of each phase, you reassess. You know, at the end of a phase in training, you, do, you test your, your new maxes or your new performance markers. And then from there, you reassess the next phase of training. Same with nutrition. Establish set points, as I was just saying. You've got to maintain that certain level for a while. You know, if you hit a new 200 kilo back squat and then you don't turn up for training for four weeks, when you get back, you ain't got a 200 kilo back squat anymore. Okay? That's, you've dropped. So you need to establish a set point and maintain that level to stay there. Uh, okay, so this is one of the, the phases for one of my clients. So this was a female client, actually she wanted to gain weight. The first four weeks, I just had her at what I thought was her rough maintenance amount and see how her body responded. After that, we went into 12 weeks of mass gain. We then had four weeks of maintenance at her new weight, which was about three kilos heavier. Maintain that set point. And then we did a 12 week cut. And then we had a four week maintenance phase after that. Now, based on whatever your goals are is how you structure things, but you need to have structure. And this is again where people go wrong. They just, they don't have any kind of structure to their, to their nutrition. And that's where it all goes wrong. I'll give you some body fat percentages. I don't like, um, people always say, oh, what's my body fat? I don't know. I don't really care. Um, if you're over fat, I can see you're over fat. If you're lean, you can see you're lean. You know, you can get a guy rocking a full on six pack at 16% body fat and the guy next to him can only show abs at 10% body fat. So what does body fat actually tell you? It's in just another number, another statistic. People become too obsessed with it. Typically though, in terms of uh, muscle building and weight loss, if a guy is over 20% body fat, if I'm being kind, I'll probably say 15%, over 15% body fat, his first priority is to drop body fat, lose fat before he does any kind of muscle building. The more fat you have on your body, the worse your partitioning of nutrients into the body is. So your body becomes more efficient at processing food, the leaner you are, okay? So if somebody is over fat, then they're better off leaning out first before they try and add some uh, muscle to them. For ladies, ladies have more body fat naturally than men. Okay, anyway, so that's, if they are below 20%, then they could go into a uh, muscle building phase. If they're above 20%, then they need to be looking at dieting down first. And this was one of the things, when we did the first seminar up in Joburg, I asked people for, and I'm not gonna pick on anyone today for examples, because I hate that shit, but um, uh, at the time we asked people for examples of protein, and this kind of grounded my their basic level of comprehension for me when potato came up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when, when I heard that and a few similar answers to that, I was like, okay, I'm not sure how the rest of this presentation is going to go, um, but we'll continue on regardless. Protein sources, so, you know, eggs, uh, poultry, meat, you know, uh, so be it your lamb, beef, pork, uh, beans, uh, lentils, these kind of things. 
I did a, a survey of, um, I was, it was about a year and a half ago now, of my female clientele in terms of all their food diaries. And at the time, it was only about 20% of about 75 food diaries of the female clientele who were eating at maintenance levels for protein. Women don't eat enough protein in general. And I'm not talking like the super high protein bodybuilder diet stuff. I'm talking enough to sustain and maintain your lean muscle mass. You need protein, builds muscle, preserves muscle. Probably the most important of the macros to get right. It spares muscle. So when you're dieting, you know, if you've got enough protein in the system, it helps to preserve your lean mass that you're to make most of the weight loss come off from fat stores. So it's anti-catabolic. And when we talk about uh, you know, uh, building muscle on that, we're not also to just talking muscle, we're talking uh, ligaments and tendons, um, hair, skin, nails, all these things. When I get female clients eating at the appropriate protein levels, on top of the kind of the, the body composition changes they see, they then start talking about their energy levels are better, their hair is better, their nails are growing much quicker than before. Um, or they're not getting, I don't know all the technical term for your ladies' nail shit, but you know, all the, the markers you get in your, the nails and the brittleness on the nails all starts to improve. It's just by getting the protein right. How much? Again, we'll come to this in a bit, but typically, for the average person, 1.8 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. And again, the stats will be up on this as well. Um, now, bearing in mind, a 100 kilo raw chicken breast is probably about 22 grams of protein. So, a 100 kilo, sorry, 100 gram chicken breast is not 100 grams of protein. It's only about 22. The rest of it's just water. So, 1.8 to about 2.2 grams. Again, that's personal preference and body goals. More than this, again, so you see these high protein diets that the bodybuilders, you know, kind of the old school bro, the guy who can't squat, he can only leg press, um, you know, typical gym rat, and he's having three, four grams of, you know, protein per body weight because muscle gets built and bro stuff, okay? Uh, <laughs> anything over and above what the body needs, it converts into energy. So you've just got the most expensive form of carbs or glucose going right there. As soon as you start overdoing the protein, it just gets converted to energy to fuel your muscles anyway. Okay, so there's no point. I much rather eat carbs um, than eating too much protein. Fats, you've got saturated, monos, polys, uh, fat sources. So you've got fats in meats, plant-based fats and you know, olive oils, um, you know, cheeses, dairy fats, nuts, dark chocolate, chocolate, um, butter. butter, yeah, all good. Not <laughs> potato. <laughs> huh? Not potato, unless it's covered in butter. <laughs> okay. Fats help to, um, are imperative for your optimal hormonal functioning. Okay. Um, proteins and fats are the only two essential um, requirements for survival in terms of your macronutrients. The body does not need carbs. Okay. As much as I love carbs, carbs are not essential for the body to, to work. I'm very much pro-carbs, but you don't need them. Okay. So fats are essential and one of the things is hormonal functioning. A lot of people, especially uh, again, the ladies when they're trying to gain weight, they like the influx of new carbs because they've never had that before, but it gets to a point where they struggle to eat the amount of carbs that's there. So we use fats instead to boost the energy intake rather than the carbs, because there's no volume. You, know, you can pour a tablespoon of olive oil on your food and you won't even notice it, but the calories are there regardless. So fats are often used as a calorie buffer when people are trying to gain weight. Minimum amount needed, I very, very rarely go below 15% of calorie needs. Okay, um, if somebody's competing down for a physique contest, we might drop down to 10% in the last couple of stages of it, but 15% is generally the lowest I'd go. My average for men is 20 to 25%, 
and my average for women is 25 to 30 percent. And again, because of the more complex hormonal cycle with women is why we prefer to give them a slightly higher fat content to help with that. Carbs. These are definitely my favorite. If somebody gave me the choice of fats or carbs for a calorie buffer, I'm taking carbs every time. Okay. Um, fruits, veggies, pasta, rice, breads, potato. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All good. Sweets, jelly tots, anything like that. Carbs are critical for growing lean mass. So protein, uh, protein is your building blocks for muscle. And when you provide stimulus to the muscle, like weight training, then the protein helps that, but the carbs are what really drive that anabolic process, okay? They provide energy for training. Um, I've had a lot of CrossFit clients over the years, um, and the amounts who have been attempting some low carb approach or some form of paleo um, where they've gone low carb, and to be fair, paleo isn't actually low carb, paleo is still high carb, but people get it wrong. Um, where they come to me with low carb and say they've got no energy for training, not getting anywhere, as soon as we change their carb intake to a higher intake and manage the other variables better, PBs, first week in training, guaranteed every time. Happens without fail. And they email back to me and say they've just had the best week in training in a year. Your central nervous system runs on carbs. Okay? Your central nervous system is what regulates how well you can push in the gym. If your central nervous system is overly fatigued or you haven't got enough carbs in the system for whatever reason, you know, if I come now and train, I haven't eaten this morning, if I train now and I haven't eaten any carbs, my training will be fine, but it won't be great. If I've had breakfast this morning with a load of carbs in it, my training will be pretty fucking epic. Um, car yeah, carbs make a difference. <laughs> it prevents muscle loss. So the protein spares it and helps build it. So if you're not eating enough and you're not putting enough carbs in to fuel your training and to preserve uh, your lean muscle mass and that, then your body taps into your lean muscle stores. And this is where we see, again, people when they're dieting, they don't have enough protein, they go low carb, they lose a load of weight, great, you look marvelous, but your metabolism is now trashed because you lost weight way too quickly. You didn't cover your protein needs, so you lost a lot of lean muscle mass, which then means your metabolism is going to be lower. And then when they rebound, because they always do, because that's the way these crash diets work, you then put on more fat than you did the first time around. So one of my clients, she lost, I think, 51 kilos with a dietitian. Same kind of approach. 1200 calorie diet, typical food pyramid of low protein and low carbs uh, that she was given by a dietitian. She lost, yeah, 50 odd kilos. And then over the course of the next 18 months, she put 61 kilos back on. And for her now to lose that weight again is even harder because she's got less muscle mass, her metabolism is lower, and she's got more fat than she had when she started. In fact, she had probably about twice as much fat as when she started. And she's now lost 50 kilos again with me and she's maintaining it. Directly promotes anabolism via insulin. Okay, so bodybuilders get really big by injecting insulin into their body. Yep, that's not natural, guys. <laughs> um, this is what carbs do. So <laughs> when you eat carbs, it produces this insulin spike, shuttles the nutrients to the muscles, helps repair, rebuild, grow, and whatnot, and so on, okay? okay. Insulin is not a bad thing. There's a local health forum where the, the leader uh, of the forum had a go at, um, on Facebook at Kalula for providing him, Kalula Airlines, for providing him a, uh, a mint which was going to spike his insulin and kill him. Okay. Now, bear in mind this is a leader of a, you know, a decent sized membership forum or whatever. And you've got somebody like this at the top telling thousands of people beneath him that insulin is bad for you, okay? Then we said to him on Facebook, you do know that without insulin you will die. Oh no, I didn't know that. Okay. Why do you think diabetics inject insulin into them? Because if they don't, they die. Okay, so you, insulin is not a bad thing. It gets a bad rap for a lot of things, and this kind of shows, you know, the problem with social media and some, you know, the blind leading the blind kind of thing on these kind of things, okay? 
So insulin is not a bad thing. We need it for growing muscle. How much carbs? As much as I'd like to say all of them. <laughs> um, once you've sorted out your protein needs and your fat needs, whatever's left from the calories goes towards carbs. And again, we'll come to that in a bit.